What's up, gamer guys and gamer girls? Green Star Rat here, and I'm bringing you another episode of Dream Daddy. I believe it is episode six <laughs> thus far, and last time uh, things got a little cute. <laughs> we went on a date with Craig. Dimbitious with thirsty, and I said only one person's thirst needs to be quenched right here, and that's gonna be me. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> we got them hags off the man, okay? We went and hung out with the man. And then we got a kiss to our forehead. And we got an S rank on the Craig date, so go us. So now we're going to continue. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the small truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice male person slides a couple letters with a large yellow envelope through the slot takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kinda busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big old envelope from HIA. Hey. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Honor Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. <laughs> Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. Again. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And... The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Mm -hmm. I can't be I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't- I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie, this is amazing! I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in! Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Ah. Wait, Aww. Dad, I know this one's really expensive. And it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. We got this. Wherever? Amanda and I walked along the bayside, tearing into a foil into our foil wrap burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships laz sail lazily through the bay. Hey. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? <sighs> My life. I want to go to art school so bad. <sighs> and we get all the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with some similar major and interests, I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. All right. Oh, 
Those you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her. But I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No? Mm. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? I really want to go to Horns. If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Aww. Aw, Dad, don't cry. Sorry. I'm just... I'm very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. That's sweet. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Mm. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> Love you too, Pops. Oh, that was sweet. Welcome. You've got Dad. Mm -hmm. Dad book part two, yo. Do we want to do more with Craig right away? Or do we want to go with another dad? Hmm. I think we're going to do all the dates in succession. We're just going to go with Craig again. It's rude to ask people about... It's apparently rude to ask people about their mysterious hand tattoos. I really want to get some f good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be ca able to catch up to him now. I type out a message to him on Dad Book. Let me, hold on, let me move this. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for round two? Craig responds almost immediately. Dude, of course. Emojis. I, uh, I don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Another message pops into my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity. Brunch. Brunch. What's that? You run, and then you get brunch. Oh. Right. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning, and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So, we doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we do, like, a salad night? Dad, are you on a health kick? I... not yet. I've formed a committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Uh. Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you, and I don't know if I can have the constitution for that. The committee is back with its findings, yet this is a multi-year assessment on several bureaucratic levels. <laughs> well... Amanda picks up the phone and stares at me, unblinking as she dials. Right. <laughs> Hi, yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese and tomatoes, and a couple of the garlic sauce cup? Amanda, you're going a little north here. Huh. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a health kick. Yeah, Rico, I know. It's tragic. <laughs> they know him by name. Hold on, I'll ask. Huh? Dad, is oregano a salad? <laughs> oregano is not a salad. 
Eh, can't blame me for trying. Nah, Rico, I'm talking to my dad. We'll just go with the meat lover's fantasy. Sure, say hi to the wife and kids for me. Amanda hangs up. Rico says hey. The food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch to eat some za. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First you on a couple light jogs. Before you know it, you're converting to garage, the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Question. Shoot. What's kombucha? <laughs> okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. Hmm. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You gonna be able to keep up with him? Hey. Probably not. <laughs> we laugh and eat more pizza than is probably healthy in the name of carbo loading. I call it a night so that I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier, despite it always ending up in me dry heaving over the trash can. Is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving. I laced up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a writer's summit I went to 20 years ago, and head out the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with River strapped to his chest. Bro! Bro. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. Wow. I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Hey, bro. Uh, morning, Craig. River gonna be running with us? Hmm. Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? <laughs> That's my baby noise. Hmm. Oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. Oh. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we even tried to wash it. It was gross. So, you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete by this point. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep up. So, where are we headed? Oh. Uh, I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh -huh. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay. I can probably handle that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Mm -hmm. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Hey, Great! Let's get started. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter, and River waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings, aside from birds chirping and River gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. Alright, warm up. Good warm up. That was a warm up. Hey! Let's start the show. Bro! But wait! Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully, I don't drop it. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey. I look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Hmm. Thanks for looking out, bro. Hey. You ready? I'm gonna try. <laughs> hmm. We finally finish our however many teenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily, too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. That's one. What? Hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off the treadmill. Yeah, man. You really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need some more someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? Blah. Oh. There's my little cheerleader. Star, are you ready? <laughs> uh, you 
you bet. <laughs> Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Hmm. Start. There's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running until you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. Nice. That's not the top. <laughs> Let's do this. In her inner voice. <sighs> I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <laughs> River, I'm having a moment. Please. Whoo, boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Ha, huh, so he is human. Oh. Star, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. Is that why runners do that? I never knew that. Hmm. I do as Craig says. It feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. Hmm. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate myself like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Hey. Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought I was just, you know, dying. Hmm. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh. What's wrong, sweet pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around nice. us. Oh boy. Man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. Dude. I've abandoned my child. Doy. We gotta find him, dude. Should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River we last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Oh. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuffed capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River Hat might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Hmm. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned Detective Riot. Oh. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro venture. Oh. We high five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. Hmm. So, looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could interrogate. Sounds good. Hey! Hey! Wait! <laughs> who's good cop, who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that often so that softens the edges a bit. Mm -hmm. All valid points. I think you'd make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch Meat Hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between, and they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. <sighs> hey. Case in point. <laughs> Let's play it moment by moment. Oh. Smart. Mm -hmm. So, where to, Brotective? We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, hey Rob. Mm. Don't call me that. Okay. Uh, hi, Robert. Mm. Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy? I don't know. What are you up to? I... Thinking. This is my thinking bitch. Huh. I have to get a solid two or three hours of brooding in per day. Filling quotas. Hmm. Uh, have you by any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? A capybara is. Mm -hmm. 
It's a large rodent native to South America, I know. Mm -hmm. So, have you seen one? Hey. A stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. I don't think I want to be bad cop with Robert. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. I don't know. Bad cop time. Robert, if you don't help us, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Mm. Is that a threat or a promise? Huh. Whoa, slow down. Hey. Robert, back off. Well, that went well. We return to the woods. Craig and I searched through the outskirts of wood, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and empty beer cans scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff. But it doesn't look like there was any recent activity that might be capybara related. Sorry guys if I'm fading out here with my voices and stuff. I'm a wee bit tired. This might be a dead end, partner bro. We return to the woods. Can I interrogate him again? Oh, Christ, what now? Robert, I'm gonna keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. Huh? I told you, I haven't seen a capybara. What is your guys' damage? Damn, again. We return to the woods. Okay, so that was just the same interaction. So we'll move to another part of the park. Where to now, bro? Uh, let's go to the field. We wander out of the grassy field, out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmen sees us spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her daddy on a sunny green patch of grass. We jog over. Hey, uh... hey dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Mm. You got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Mm. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. <laughs> that hurt my voice. That hurt my throat. You guys working out? Good day for today. Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Hmm. Good transition star. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? Hmm. What's a capybara? It's a large runner that's native to South America. Wait a second. You know what a capybara is. You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned about capybaras, capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? <laughs> what if I'm a culprit and I just don't remember? I quickly check my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. I saw Memento once, and I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Star, don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check it out. I don't know. Uh, thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmen Sita. Mm -hmm. Well, we better get moving. We gotta find that Cappy Bear before River here has a breakdown. Oh. Good luck. Let me get some apples for the road, though. Let me see the hooks me up with some road slices, and we're on our way. We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much besides a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out to me from across the field. Star! Oh. I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass inspecting something. I approach. My heart in my throat as I lean over Craig. I see it. This is Arnold's leg. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should have to be subjected to this. Senseless violence. 
My god, who or what would do this? Oh, man. I don't know, but now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. I don't know. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. Ah, oh, buddy. I got a rain check on brunch. I need to get River home and calm her down. Alright, good luck, bro. Thanks, bro. I head back to the cul-de-sac alone and head inside the house. God, I'm ready for a shower. A gallon of water and a nap. Hmm, I bet Amanda's still asleep. Hmm. Crack open her door to find her still in bed, sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Mm. Right. How was brunch? Well, we had a good time with the run part, but we didn't make it to the rest of the portmanteau. Portmanteau? Portmanteau! Mm. Huh? To brunch. We didn't make it to brunch. Somehow we lost River's toy capybara on our run. A capybara oh. is... Dad, don't patronize me about giant rodents. I know. Sorry. Anyway, we look everywhere for the damn thing, but Craig had to get River home before she went berserk. Hmm. So the run went well, though. I was a little worried about your endurance. Yeah, it was rough at first, but it ended up being a nice piece of being a piece of cake. I actually feel pretty. Gr Whoa. My legs give out. I find myself on the floor of the hallway. I'm just gonna hang out here for a while. You take your time getting up. I feel like that was not an S. Uh, oh no. I probably could have picked some better options. Aw, sadness. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in after a few bites of ice cream for the freezer. I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Uh, not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda, get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. What has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. Huh? About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So... Anything big going on at school today? <sighs> No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. 
I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I forced her, force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. Aw, that's so sweet. It took me a really long time because I ran out of the red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over, and... This is beautiful. It's strawberry. And it gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve, up, serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart or something. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh, uh, I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R... You got it! Wow. Proud of you. Mm -hmm. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away. You know. And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M. that both the Emmas, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at McKinsey F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. Oh. So, another important piece of information is... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, I have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay, <clears throat> you're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall. After not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than like 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? We were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Aww. So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos, without me. What? <laughs> it gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. <laughs> yes! I know! So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey! And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does, and Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the. <laughs> I know! Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize that's not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry, really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day. 
and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they'd been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R asking how long the Noah thing's been going on and... Sorry, I know this is a lot. You still following? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Mana pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Hmm. You believe that? I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then she left me on read. And then, wait, left me on read? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Uh. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. I, I hated high school for this reason. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but... Mm. Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah, I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kinda mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected I almost can't take it. What can I possibly say to help? Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's approximating human feelings this whole time. <laughs> Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously... I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure out figure that out about myself. Figure that out myself. And I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting in the effort to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Ah. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. <laughs> well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? Hey. Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Aww, it's so sweet. Welcome. You've got Dad. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to save here, guys, and we will do Craig's third date tomorrow. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm getting the feels. I'm getting the heats. 
which is what happens when I see these cute guys. And yes, I know they're hand drawn, but they're drawn well. So don't try me right now. <laughs> anyway, um, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. That will be over here somewhere. And a video will be over here if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.